By the end of this tutorial, you're going to learn how to make this completely detachable 3D printable bubble planter, and as well as how to make these detachable and attachable hooks within Fusion 360. Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we'll be covering part four of Fusion 360 for 3D printing. And we today continuing off our previous video of making this 3D printable bubble plancher within Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and cover exactly what we're gonna cover in today's video. So the first thing we're gonna cover is how to design this 3D printable bubble plancher within Fusion 360. The second thing we're also gonna cover is this circular pattern feature within Fusion. Lastly, we're also going to cover how to avoid using supports, especially when you're going to be 3D printing this piece, um, and essentially what features can we use within Fusion to reduce the chance of using supports. Also, if you haven't already, feel free to join the 3D printing community down below in the description. And with that said, let's jump back into last video's previous file and get started. So here we are with Infusion 360 following up from our previous tutorial. You should have something that looks a little bit like this. Now what we're gonna do now is create the detachable bottom and as well as make sure that they could actually connect to each other for our planter. So in order to do that, let me go ahead and revert our color or my color back to its original color. So we'll, that way we have the same design here. And if you also added a color to your design, you can go ahead and just add back the steel or satin one. Um, absolutely not necessary, but just congruency with our design. Let's go ahead and revert it back to its original color. So the very first thing we need to do is create an offset plane. And by doing this, what we're going to do is split this one body into two separate bodies. So by pressing S on our keyboard, typing in offset, you should, you should see we have three different options, offset, offset face, and offset plane. By selecting offset plane, this allows us to create a new plane within our canvas. And let's go ahead and select this very top face here and drag this down. Now, what we want to do now is drag this down to the point where we can actually meet this bubble in the middle. So for example, we actually want to hide this feature. So when we 3D print it, you really could not tell that these two parts disconnect from each other. So let's go ahead and find the center of our design here. And I would say anywhere between 66 and 67. Um, and to be accurate, it'd be negative 66.8, I believe and press enter. Now we have a plane right in between these little two bubbles here. But these are still not two separate pieces yet. We need to go ahead and separate these pieces. So what we're gonna do now is by pressing S on our keyboard, typing in split within our shortcuts, you see we have three different options. By selecting the split body feature, this allows us to do exactly what it says, which is split body. By selecting this bubble section here, this bubble body here, and by selecting our plane at the very bottom. Now we have a cut in between the bottom section here and this very top section here. And you should see Fusion should create a red circle right around it, indicating that it's gonna cut in between these two pieces. After that's done, press okay. Now we should have something that looks a little bit like this. So the very next step in this process is to go ahead and create some latches for the bottom piece here. So by doing that, let's go ahead and also uh, rename this. So let's rename this to top. And then this is already set up to bottom, but you can go ahead and rename it to bottom. Once that's done, let's go ahead and toggle off our top, toggle off our plane, and let's reorient our design so we can get a top-down view of our newly created body here. So what we need to do now is create a sketch on this face here, which allows us to create some sort of hook or anchor that connects to the very top of our body. So by pressing Create Sketch, selecting this face here, by pressing L on our keyboard, let's select the origin of our design and drag this all the way up to the very outside of it. So the very top second, uh, this very top uh, circular face here. So you should see it kind of snap on in here. After that's done, press OK. Let's go ahead and create three more lines. So by pressing L on our keyboard, selecting the outer line here, dragging this up, making sure that they are nice and straight upwards. Now it doesn't matter the distance. Let's just go ahead and create three more. We'll go ahead and set the distance in a bit. And now you should have a total of three lines. You have one, two, and three. Now, as of right now, these are not fully constrained yet. So let's go ahead and set up some dimensions so that we can constrain these lines. So by pressing D on our keyboard, we can select this outer line here and this inner line in here. Once that's done, let's set a dimension value to 11. Let's go ahead and repeat the exact same process. But for these outer lines here, we're actually going to set this to five. And one more time, let's go ahead and select a distance between this line and this line. 
and set that one to five. Now what we've done so far is created basically three lines. We have this outer line here, these inner line, this inner line here, and this outer line as well. And I'll show you exactly why these are important in just a second. So from here, let's go ahead and create some offset for this uh, sketch here. So by pressing O on our keyboard, we can select this inner edge here, drag this up, and I'd say to about two millimeters. Let's go ahead and create another offset, drag this up four millimeters, Let's create one more offset, drag this up, and this will be 4.5 millimeters. After that's done, press OK. And now you should have something that looks like this. Now I know it's a little bit confusing as of right now, but what we are essentially doing is setting up our face here with some sketches that allows us to extrude uh, or create some um, holes and some sections where we can actually fit our anchor into our design. So what we need to do now is press E on our keyboard. And by selecting these two outer profiles here, we can drag this up to let's just say about four millimeters. After that's done, make sure you have uh, the operation selected to join and press OK. Now from here, you should have this sort of um, this sort of rectangle that's connected to this uh, lower body here. But we're not done as of right now. Let's go ahead and create that little hook that allows it to hook to the top. So by toggling back on our sketch, and by selecting this little interface or these little profiles here, by pressing E on our keyboard and select this one and this one. And what we need to do for these is actually a little unique and different. What we're gonna do now is create an offset for these and extrude this all the way to the very top to match this piece here. Now, in order to do that, let's go ahead and by selecting the start option within the extrude menu, let's type in, uh, let's select this little box here, select offset, and the offset is gonna be set to two millimeters. After that's done, we can also select this very top face here. And what that'll do is Fusion will go ahead and extrude that to match the very top of this face there. After that's done, press OK. And now you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Now, if we were to 3D print this, we would actually need supports for this. What we're trying to do in this video is try to minimize the, the chance or minimize or get note supports for this because realistically, we don't need supports for this design. So from here, let's go ahead and by selecting S on our keyboard, typing in chamfer and selecting this little, little edge right here at the very outside of this and selecting this inner edge in here, you should kind of see it kind of uh, show up as you move or hover around this section here, dragging this inward all the way until you have a completely flushed in chamfer in here, which is about one millimeter if done correctly. After that's done, press OK. Now that we have our newly created hook, let's go ahead and revisit our entire body, toggling off our sketch. And now you should see that we have this hook sitting on the very outside of our design here. Now what's unique about Fusion 360, as mentioned in the last video, is the, the fact that you can actually pattern certain features and bodies and faces within Fusion without having to repeat this exact same process all around our design. So by pressing S on our keyboard and typing in circular pattern, this newly created dialog box should pop up. In the previous video, I believe we used pattern on path to go ahead and create a uh, pattern using the bubbles and uh, moving those bubbles in, in the Z direction to create multiple pieces. In this video, we're gonna use the circular pattern to replicate this exact same feature that we just created around the entire design. So what we're gonna do now is using the select features within the object type, let's go ahead and select the last three uh, features that we just created within our timeline. Once that's done, select the axis. The axis will be the Z axis for this design. And once that's done, make sure the quantity is set to three, compute type is optimized and press okay. Now we have three hooks on the very bottom of our design. And that pretty much wraps up for this bottom section here. Now to replicate this exact same process for the top, we need to go ahead and toggle back on our sketch, toggle off our bottom and toggle back on our top. Once that's done, let's orient this to the very top of our design. So looking at this from the bottom, you should have your section set up like this. What we need to do now is go ahead and create some slots in here so we can actually fit the anchors into the design. So what we're gonna do now is extrude these profiles here in order to create a slot for our anchor to fit into. So by pressing E on our keyboard, let's go ahead and select this profile, this one, this one, this one, in this one. So you should have selected a total of five profiles. And let's go ahead and reorient this just a little bit that we can get a better look at our design. 
From here, let's go ahead and extrude this by about 4.1 millimeters, just for some clearance. After that, press OK. Now you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Now we also need to create some sort of offset for this section here because in the previous design or in the previous uh, feature we created an offset for the bottom piece. So by pressing E on our keyboard let's go ahead and select these four profiles here. By going to start let's go ahead and offset this by about two millimeters just like how we did previously. And then let's go ahead and select this top face here. Now if you go ahead and try to select this top face, you'll actually see that you're selecting the sketch that we just created. Let's go ahead and toggle off our sketch and select this top face here. After that, you should see that Fusion 360 will automatically cut into the very top while not going past to that face that we just selected. After that, it's done, press OK. And now you should have something that looks like this. It essentially is a rectangle that's sitting in between uh, this little gap that we've created and this will be the part that acts as our chamfer or a chamfer for this section for the anchor to hook onto. So by pressing S on our keyboard, typing in chamfer, selecting these two lines here, dragging this up, that way these are perfectly aligned with each other. So I would say 1.21 or 25 and there we go. Now you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Now, if we take a bird's eye view of this and we actually create a section analysis. Now, as of right now, you don't have to follow along. So let me just show you exactly what I'm referring to. So if I were to toggle back on our bottom design and create a section analysis, what this essentially allows me to do is create a split view or an, a section analysis of our design here. So I'm cutting right in between the middle of our design using the plane in the very center. And if I were to press OK, you can kind of see that the bottom piece sits right at the very top and if I were to take a better look since this is right in the middle it may not give the best accurate angle now as you can see the bottom piece here sits very well with some clearance in between the entire design for it to fit right through and if I were to show you what this looks like in action so for example if I were to pretend like this was coming out let's go ahead and rotate this outward and move this down and if we were to replay this animation here rotate it and bam that's essentially how the whole process works so once we finish that let's go ahead and finish up this design so let me go ahead and clean this up really quick toggling back on our bottom and from here you should be looking at your design from this view here now what I want to do now is using the exact same feature that we did in the previous uh, on, the, on the bottom design, let's go ahead and use this circular pattern feature to replicate this exact same gap here. So we're pressing S on our keyboard, typing in circular pattern and selecting the last three features we just created, selecting the axis to the Z axis and pressing OK. Now you should have three new gaps and new slots for these anchors to fit into. After that's done, you're pretty much done. Now, of course, we are not completely done yet. We are done in terms of the technical details of this design, but we pretty much have a fully working design, so if we were to rotate this out and move this out, it would uh, also be able to snap back in place and or, or hook onto place, if that makes sense. One additional thing we can do with this is also add some sort of uh, bottom here or some sort of slot here. with So that way some, there's some sort of drainage going to the bottom. That way it's not just this completely uh, open gap here. So what we can do now is by toggling off the bottom, reorienting to the bottom of our design creating a sketch, selecting this face here, and let's go ahead and create a center diameter circle. So by selecting the origin of our design, dragging this up to the edge, and by pressing E on our keyboard, let's go ahead and extrude this upwards, let's just say to about five millimeters and set the option operation to join. Once that's done, we have a completely closed off bottom and also, we also want to make sure and account for the fact that since we are also hooking something into here, now we've added a new piece in here that would very likely not give enough clearance for it to fit through. So the easy way of doing this is just by adding a chamfer, selecting these three edges here, and just pushing this inward to about four millimeters. Press OK. After that's done, we are pretty much done. Let's go ahead and add a hole at the very bottom. So by using the whole feature within Fusion, let's go ahead and center this up. Maybe make this a little bit bigger. Press OK. Now, it doesn't really matter at this point. You could just make the holes in whatever pattern you want. So now we're pretty much done with this design here. You can see that we have our anchor sitting flush or pretty much sitting on the hook of our design. 
and this little chamfer that we created gives it enough clearance for uh, this hook here not to hit within this wall here as well and of course if we were to rotate this bottom piece here you know you you would see that to move this out drag it out drag it back in and then rotate it back in place as many times as you want so that's pretty much it for today's tutorial let's go ahead and export this back to our slicer so by selecting our top uh, section here saving as mesh pressing ok and as you can see I've already imported what I really like about this design is that this design requires no supports so you really don't need any supports to make this work as you can see if we take a quick look dragging this down and our chamfer basically creates uh, a nice even print where overhang should not be an issue additionally this little section where there is a complete overhang your printer should have no issue printing that piece um, since it's just a small gap but if you prefer not to have that small gap in place you can actually print it the other way I believe Let's see or actually never mind you really can't but you can kind of see that this small gap is small enough where your printer should have no issue printing right over that additionally, additionally the exact same thing for the very other piece here so let's go ahead and add that piece there and now you have a completely detachable and 3d printable bubble planter completely made within Fusion 360 that requires no supports and pretty much is ready to be 3D printed. So with that said, that pretty much wraps up today's tutorial. Let me know you guys' thoughts, comments, and opinions down below in the comment section below, as well as if you guys have any feedback for this tutorial or video, let me know as well as I plan to make tutorials, uh, more tutorials just like this to help you guys get better at Fusion 360 and 3D printing. And as well as if you haven't already, join the 3D printing community down below in the description. If you guys also found this video insightful and informative and you actually want the STL files, the STL files will be in the community as well. Um, with that said, make sure to join the community as I release more content just like this in that group. So with that said, this is Brandon signing out and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Peace.